the station that's on your side. This is Channel 7 News. Good morning, Arkansas. Welcome back to Good Morning, Arkansas, everyone. This morning, we're learning about COVID-19 and something called myocarditis. And Dr. Laura Wilson is here this morning to tell us what exactly that is. Laura, what can you tell us that myocarditis is this morning? Yeah, well, good morning. So we have more emerging information about the risk of myocarditis following COVID infection, and especially in kids. I'm a pediatrician, so that's kind of the focus of this, though I think most of this information probably extrapolates to adults, but specifically about myocarditis following COVID in children. And so the first question is, what is myocarditis? Well, it's an inflammation and a weakening of the heart that can follow a viral infection. And we've known about myocarditis for years. This is not a new diagnosis. It can follow really any virus, but we're seeing that it may have a little increased risk after a COVID infection. So maybe this particular virus seems to strike the heart a little more than most average viruses. The good news is it's pretty rare. It's a very rare complication in any virus and still in COVID, even though it may be a higher risk, it's still pretty low. But the scary part is we think it can follow mild COVID infections or even asymptomatic kids. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty scary to think about the fact your kid could be positive, have zero symptoms and still have some heart issues later. Some of the information has kind of emerged from something they did at one of the colleges with a football team. They had a little mini outbreak there. And of the the, uh, football players, a decent number were positive for COVID, even though asymptomatic, but a small percentage had inflammation on the heart of the heart found on echo later where the person didn't even know they'd been sick. So it's a little scary thinking about that. But again, we got to remember this is a pretty rare complication of COVID. In the worst case scenario, it could lead to heart failure, even a need for a heart transplant. But in a lot of kids, they could have pretty good recovery with minimal long term complications from it. Absolutely. And I guess we're learning some newer recommendations, maybe from doctors. Um, If this is something that you come in contact with, what can you tell us those are? Right. Some some of the newer recs have come out really regarding young athletes because we know exercise tra- exercise strains the heart, right? We know that. Well, we worry that if COVID also strains the heart, that exercise and COVID together could really increase the risk for the complication of myocarditis. So some of the new recs that came out in the past couple months is that children that have severe COVID disease, so these are kids that are in the ICU. These are kids that are very sick, maybe on a ventilator. They should be restricted from exercise for three to six months following COVID infection, again, because the heart's trying to recover. We don't want to further stress it by adding exercise. So that's going to be very few kids that fall into that category. But the mildly symptomatic COVID kids, they're actually recommending now 14 days without exercise after symptom resolution. So if you think about a kid, if they're sick for seven to 10 days during a COVID illness, even if it's mild, we're talking about an additional 14 days after that, that the child is not recommended to exercise. If you have an asymptomatic child, so zero symptoms at all, they restrict exercise for 14 days from the time of the positive test. So I think a lot of families are really unaware that recommendation is out there. And again, it's pretty new, but this is really more so for our young athletes. But I think that it's not a bad idea to think about any child in general relatively restricting their exercise because of the risk of a myocarditis. Right. And I know we never want to think about the worst case scenario, but, you know, say it did become significant illness within a younger person, uh, what are some of the things people might have to do or look out for in that case? Right. So if you have some heart inflammation or evidence of myocarditis, they typically would present with shortness of breath, with exercise, chest pain, palpitations, cardiac type symptoms. And it typically would be following the illness, maybe a week or two or three. I don't know that we have a great timeline, but sometime after, not day one or anything like that. With all this coming out about the athletic stuff for kids and COVID, um, we have new recommendations too coming from our American Academy of Pediatrics and some of the heart associations that really want these young athletes cleared by their PCP before they return to sports. And so we're, I'm now seeing in the clinic that these kids need to come in ideally after their isolation period, which is the 10 days, right? Because I don't want to increase the risk for myself or my staff or other patients exposing them to COVID. But after their isolation period, they need to come in usually at that 10 to 14 day mark for a clearance from their physician. At times, the doctor may involve cardiology or even do an EKG to further look at the heart. But basically, that is to check blood pressure, listen to the heart, check for a murmur, ask these questions. Are you having any of these symptoms to make sure the child does look fit to return to play at that 14 day mark in a mild or asymptomatic child? Absolutely. A lot of really good things to keep in mind. You know, you always want to be as best prepared as possible. And of course, 
we, we love our children in their sports and we love going to those sporting events. We want to keep them healthy. So Dr. Laura Wilson, good stuff this morning. If viewers at home want to maybe learn more about this or get in contact with you, uh, where can they reach you? Sure. I'm out at Sherwood Family Medical. It's a Baptist clinic on Keel and Sherwood. Our number is 501-835-0703.